In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the polarity or the charges of molecules, the entire thing. So we're going to go back and think about how bonds, how they're polar or nonpolar. We're going to be going over some rules to determine if a molecule has a charge. And we're going to be examining both of these topics together at the same time. So just to recap guys, bond polarity is the relative orientation of a positive and negative attraction on a piece of matter. So for example, our planet has two poles, the north and south pole, a positive and negative side. Magnets themselves will have two different sides. And thinking about bonding, positives will be attracted to negatives. When we have a nonpolar covalent bond, that means that the sharing of the electrons between the two atoms are going to be equal. There's going to be no tug of war contest. This means that there are no positive and negative charges. When we have a polar covalent bond, this is going to be where we have what we call that dipole moment because of the fact that one of the two in a bond is going to be unequally distributed. So therefore, when we look at water, hydrogen with a 2.2 electronegativity compared to oxygen with a 3.4, hydrogen's losing electrons and they're being given up more or less to the oxygen, but they're still being shared. That means that in a water molecule, the hydrogens are positively charged while the oxygen is negatively charged, thus dipoles. So molecular polarity, there's two types of molecules, just like there's two types of covalent bonds. There's polar molecules and then there's nonpolar molecules. In a polar molecule, we're going to see an asymmetrical shape, so uneven charge distribution of those electrons. There is going to be a central atom that has a lone pair on it, um, at least one. And then there are going to be terminal atoms, not necessarily identical. Uh, then nonpolar molecules, which have a symmetrical shape, they're going to be even charge distribution. Um, and in this case, the terminal atoms have to be identical. So let's look at these two models. On the left, we have HBr, and on the right, we have O2. Thinking about the rules that we just gave you, let's look at HBr. You're noticing that you have a hydrogen and a bromine, two different elements, and one of them has lone pairs. So we can say that HBr, which is a linear shape, is asymmetrical, therefore it is a polar molecule. And the reason why is there's no symmetry, and the terminal atoms are not identical. They're not the same thing. However, when you look at O2, it as well is a linear shape, it appears to be a nonpolar molecule because of the fact that the terminal atoms are identical. And if you were to cut this model right in half, it's symmetrical on both sides. Here is another set of examples. Uh, CCl3Br and CCl4. Um, you have a central atom that has no lone pairs, but you have terminal atoms that are um, not identical on the left but are identical on the right. So looking at the one on the left, it's considered polar because of its asymmetrical shape due to the fact that the terminal atoms are not identical. And then on the right, we consider this to be nonpolar because there is a symmetrical shape because the terminal atoms are all identical. Let's analyze these two. On the left we have water and on the right we have ammonia. But when you look at both of these, they both contain lone pairs on their central atoms. Therefore, they're both going to be considered to be polar. The reason why they're polar is that there is no symmetry because of the fact that the lone pairs are on a central atom. On the left, for water, it is a bent structure. And on the right, for NH3, it is a trigonal pyramidal structure. Okay. Uh, on the right, we have BF2I, and on the left we have BF3. Um, if you look at BF3, you'll notice that it is symmetrical, so it is a nonpolar structure. On the right, however, because of that one terminal atom that is not identical with the others, it's considered polar. 
So revisiting the idea of bond polarity, bond polarity is the electronegative difference between two atoms in a chemical bond. So don't forget guys, to be a nonpolar bond you must be between 0 and 0 0.39. And to be polar you must be above 0 0.4 but below 2.0. If you have a polar bond, that means you're going to have positive and negative dipoles inside of your molecule. So for example, if you look at the H2O, Hydrogen has a 2.2, oxygen's got a 3.4, so therefore the bonds inside of water are polar. But when you look at O2, both of them are a 3.4, therefore the electronegative difference is zero. Thus, in our model on the right, they have nonpolar bonds. So let's put this all together. When you look at your H2O, you're going to first off notice that the electronegative difference of a 0 0.8 tells you it's a polar covalent bond. When you look at the actual elements, hydrogens are going to be your positive dipole, while oxygen is going to be your negative dipole. Therefore, when you draw the dipoles onto your model, they would cross and look like this, showing that the hydrogens are giving electrons, though sharing, to the oxygen, hence the arrow directions towards the oxygen. When we think about the shape, the VESPER model tells us, because it is an AX2E2, that is a bent shape. And because of the fact the lone pairs are on the center atom, called a polar molecule. And again, thinking about those lone pairs, they do not do bonding. Because they do not do bonding and they want their own space, that is the very specific reason why water will always have that bent shape. And if you draw it wrong, I will fight you. So now looking at O2, the bonds between uh, each oxygen ends up at zero because they're both 3.4. If it ends up at zero, it's nonpolar covalent bond. That means there is no dipole. There's even charge distribution. If there's no dipole, then it's got to be a nonpolar molecule because it's a symmetrical shape. And due to the symmetry of this shape, you could see that it's linear.